ですね。Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. 2022. How would have, who would have thought? Anyway, we're on the air again, and we're back, and we've got lots of different projects to do this year. So I hope you've all had a nice break away from uh, my mug, and um, you know, now we'll get started again. We'll have another year of, uh, of really um, exciting sort of projects. Now. Last year we did uh, quite a few different projects. You can see by what we've done on the back wall here and, um, and a few other projects that uh, you might have been uh, having a go at yourself. Um, and this was the last one we did last year, so I have to show it off again. It's, it's, um, I'm quite pleased with it. Uh, it did come up really, really nicely. Um, so I'm just going to go through that a little bit and then we're going to talk about some of the other projects that we did last year. So this is... Uh, as you can see, there were lots of different things with this box that we, we sort of built up to from the beginning of the year. So um, all of those little things came together on this particular box. Now we're going to do a similar sort of thing this year. We're going to start with a very simple project this year and then we're going to sort of start building onto it and, and putting together lots of different functions and lots of different things that people do with boxes and cabinets and, and drawers and all sorts of different things. So we're going to have a real, a really um, a, a sort of a building process right through it. Now, each of the projects is going to take a few weeks because I'm only going to work for an hour. That means that if you want to keep up and you want to work with me, then what you can do is uh, have a look at, uh, watch the video on the Sunday morning, um, go into your workshop, um, copy what I've done if you if that's the way you want to do things and then um, the next week I'll go on with the next thing I'm not going to do parts in the middle of the week unless it's really necessary so if uh, if we get stuck with something then I may do a little midweek one but not very often so mostly so that you guys can keep up with what I'm what I'm doing so this one here like I do I'm just gonna sh I've got to show it off it, it just it looks really nice the, the box itself ended up with the, the lovely 3D, three dimensional dovetails, um, which was something that we, um, we, we thought about and I had a little play with. And I saw it somewhere, I don't know where, many years ago, and I haven't seen it since. So I thought, well, I'll reintroduce it and bring it back again. We've got the double dovetails on the, on the top, uh, the dove, sorry, the, dove, the, 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 the double butterflies on the top. And uh, I'll show you those in a sec. And then when we open the box, we have all of this lovely um, interior stuff that we, we went through. Um, so as you can see, nice red um, uh, felt on the inside of it. And, and these are removable. So that was the other thing that a lot of people commented on it. And I, and I had somebody ring me and say, how do you fold it over on the on the underside of the box on the underside of the panel? I generally don't because it fits in so neatly. You can, if you want, turn it over and fold around the edges of that and and glue it on if you like. But I don't see it necessary for for these particular types of boxes because you can take it out and you've got this lovely finish on the inside of the box anyway. So you can have that showing rather than your your um your insert so quite a nice little feature there the other feature that we we experimented with were the little um, lifters on the corners 
um, if I just turn that around, the little lifters on the corners um, came out really, really well as well. It, it's um, uh, just another added feature, something to show off your skill level. Um, get it, get it done there. The other, the other thing that uh, uh, people have, have commented on is the, is this, is this uh, tapered um, sides on the, on the, on the, the tray. It, um, it came up quite, quite nicely there. And then when you take that tray out, we had the double trays inside again, featuring the little, the little lifters, um, and. And then when you look inside the box itself, you can actually see that it's it's quite a deep box. So that was built exactly the same way. You can see the little piston fit really nicely. The other the other thing that I, I, I had a comment I had a, a conversation with a with a with a fellow a couple of weeks ago about the thickness of the the thickness of the um, the walls of all the internal componentry. He was struggling with with what sort of jig to use um, to cut dovetails in the internal componentry. I found I use my H10, and most of the material that I use on the insides is about seven millimeters, particularly the bigger boxes. It's it's quite small. It looks in 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 proportion to the rest of the box, and the thing about it was that you can cut. A rebate in the bottom with our rebate cutter, and still have plenty of meat on the sides of the of the um, the box uh, to give it plenty of support. Okay, so that was it, and we just tipped that up so that you can see the butterflies on the top of it, which came out really really nicely, and the timbers actually match nicely too. This um, red banks here, which is not a common timber that we see around, and um, the butterflies look really good too. So. That was uh, that was our final project last year. So we're finished with that. We'll get that out of the way. I'll just go and put it over here. Just a sec. Shift it away. So now this project. Let's have a look at what we're going to do this time. You can see my little. Um, my little rotisserie or my little lazy Susan. Um, I made it a few weeks ago, so it's uh, it's quite a nice little thing to actually sit things on. So this is our project for next the next setup. It's just easily lifted off the wall. I sit it on there. I can actually turn it around. You can actually see it quite nicely now. So. It's just a little cabinet. Now, if, if you look on YouTube, if you look on Instagram, you'll find that there are lots of people making these little cabinets. What I'm going to do is um, build it in such a way that it's, it's a very simple, simple task, just making a box with some dovetails in it. And what you will end up with is these lovely dovetails in the, in the side of the box. So what we want to do is we want to have some dovetails showing in the side of the box. So those ones there. So there are a number of different techniques we're going to use here. And so this one here is just a, a, a simple little one. You can see also that I have the butterflies in the top around the, around the frame of the, of the door. This door is just a, has a Perspex, Perspex front on it. You don't need to put the Perspex front on. You can do whatever you like with it. But we're going to sort of make it up as we go along. You'll see that the tray at the bottom of it is also dovetailed and it also has a front leader on it. Okay, so when we take the drawer out, still got all the junk in it, you can see that I've got a butterflies, uh, butterfly um, trench here and on the front of it I've put on a piece of um, a different coloured material just to sort of give it a little bit of a highlight or something like that. So that's the sort of thing that we're going to do. As you can see, just two hinges. Nice little drawer, so it's not very big, and you can see if you look at the thing, we'll, we'll again dovetailed, um, dovetailed drawer. So, and because it's got a front on it, 
we've actually got what we could classify as a blind dovetail. Okay, only these ones here, I've done it back to front. But there's a reason for that. But anyway, we're not going to go there. We're going to do something different again. So this was my little experiment, experimental one. Now on the back, I have French cleat. Okay, so the idea is so that I can shift it around my workshop and I can go wherever I want to. I can put it over here. I can put it over there. All I have to do is, is mount the bits on the wall. So I'm going to show that on the camera, just um, the cleats. So you can see on the wall, there's just two little brackets. Okay, just up there behind everything. And then I'll just put this up there. And it's just a matter of fitting it straight onto there. Just like that. So, sits up there really nicely. And there we have it. Now, the making of it. I haven't got a plan. We're going to make it up as we go because the thing about it is we want something that will house particular tools. So if you have a look on the wall here, you can see it, it's a mess, right? I've got spanners, I've got pliers, screwdrivers, all sorts of bits and pieces hung on the wall. The problem with that is that they get a bit dusty. They're not housed. It doesn't look very nice. So we're going to sort of make it up as we go for each of those different tools. Okay, so we'll, we'll work through it little bit by little bit and then we'll say, okay, this one's for chisels and we'll work out what chisels we're going to use and how we're going to fit them in the cupboard. So therefore the size of the box will have to be determined by the tools that we put in it. Okay, now when I started this, I had a two meter piece of camphor. Okay, so it was two meters long, it's 20 millimeters thick, all right, it's 200 meters across. So if you have a piece of material that's about that size, nice and easy to use, um, something that's softish, it doesn't have to be heavy materials. If you want to do it out of Jarrah, Jarrah's got a bit of weight to it, it tends to be something heavy that hangs on the wall. What we're going to do is we'll dress it down to the sizes that we need. Now, I've already done that with the bits and pieces. And what I have, this of course was the extension on the end of there. What I have here is I've got the top and the bottom panels and the two side panels and I've dressed them up. Now, these bits, I've dressed them down to 14 millimeters. Okay, so that, or they're just a, a hair over 14 millimeters. And that's an adequate thickness um, to give you a visual, a nice visual effect and proportion for the box. 500 millimeters long, 100 millimeters wide. Okay, so that's the size of my, my cabinet. Now, if I make them all the same, if I make them all 100 millimetres wide and about 500 high, the width doesn't matter. It can be determined by, again, the tools that we use. So that's where we're going to go with it. And I can make four or five of them, five, you know, however many I need to go on the wall. Okay, so cut yourself a piece of timber first and then we'll get started on what we're going to do. So now, first step. Dress your timber down and sand it to about 400. So I've done that. This is nice and smooth and, and I don't want to be fiddling around with the inside of the box. For those of you who have seen my work in the past, you'll see that um, generally what I do is I'll dress the timber, sand it to about uh, four to 600 and then I'll start cutting joints because I know my joints are going to be spot on because of the gear that I'm, I'm using. Okay, so We'll see how we go. All right, now, first task was to work out our dovetails. And what I did was I cut myself some test joints. Now the test joints I've done with two different jigs. 
And the reason for that is because I'm, I'm using my B, B cutters, my B templates. If I've used, if I use my B10, my, my jumbo jig, this is the jumbo jig. The spacing between the, 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 the pins is 48 millimeters. Okay, so it's quite it's quite quite a long distance, right? And so what I want to do is work out whether I can use this one or use my B template, my B10. I'll just put that in front of there so you can see it. The distance between the pins on this is 38 millimeters. Now that's important because I'll put these out of the way again. When we put these are our test pieces, if we set up at 48 millimeters, you can see I've got a very wide spacing between my pins. Okay, you can see that there. The thing that happens here is with this width of timber, I'm going to have a small amount of material on the, each end of it. And what I want to do is I want to add a door on one side and I'm going to put a back on the other side. So what we're doing is we've actually got very small support, even though it's what would be glued together, is a very small amount of material to uh, support you know, those two functions. So if, let me just pull that apart, Turn it around, and this size is the B10. And as you can see, it's a really snug, nice fit. And you can see with that one there, the distance between the pins is a little less. Okay, it's 38 millimeters. And the idea of that is that I've got lots of material here and here to support the functions that I'm going to do on both sides of the of the of the box. So that's that was my reasoning so that's what we're going to do i'm going to use the 10 so that i've got lots of support and i had to think about whether i used my jumbo which has got the wider spacing or my b10 which has a little bit narrower so that the b10 is 38 mil the jumbo is 48 mil okay so Think about that when you're doing it. If you have the two, well, then you've got a decision. If you don't have the two, well, then I've got, obviously my, my explanation is um, uh, redundant. redundant. <laughs> you must. So that was my reasoning. But the important thing to remember is do your test joints. Make sure you do your test joints. Set the jig up so that it's going to work for you. Okay. If you don't do that, then you'll, you'll find you're going to struggle. This material here was the off-cut bits. And you can see, you can see I've got a fault in it, so it came, became a test joint. And it's exactly the same thickness, um, exactly the same width. It's exactly the same as the material that I'm using to make the box. So make that a habit. Get it into your head that it's, you've got to use the same material. Okay, there's one other thing that we had to play with, and I'm going to show you how to do that when we set up. Okay, so we're going to set up to cut ourselves our dovetails. We're using our dovetail bits there. So they're the two bits. Now they're half inch drive. That's the way they work. And they're sprung loaded so that they're going to sit on the thing. Our first task this is what we do every single time we start for the day is we give it a scrub get the rubbish off there that was from the last job just make sure it's nice and clean like so get rid of that excess this only takes a few minutes so it's very important that we do give everything a bit of a clean get rid of the excess. If you don't, you can seize your bearings and therefore cause a whole lot of grief. So all I'm going to do now is we have a, a, a little bit of oil and I'm only putting a drop in there 
and then I'm just making sure that that bearing runs nicely. What I want to do is make sure that the bearing has plenty of uh, fluid in there so it becomes uh, it, it really liquid inside. We want to, I'm just creating a slurry really, if there is any sawdust in there, just creating that little bit of slurry. And for those of you who haven't done this before, very important. If you haven't watched me before, you'll see that I do it pretty much every single time. The other thing that I do is is I take out the sleeve and I give it a scrub too. Just make sure it's nice and clean. If you don't, you'll find that um, your router bits might raise up a little bit. Everything's nice and clean. If you're using a reducing collet, like this, okay, give that a scrub as well, particularly when you're doing your quarter inch drive. Give it a scrub, tiny little bit of oil in there, just enough to give it a, a sluice around, just to clean it up, and then that will slit, sit in there quite nicely if you're when you're using it. So. I'm not using that because it's half inch drive. Get rid of that, and that's the maintenance. Okay, always cut your dovetails first. Now, when you're putting this in here, just come in right in as close as you can with that. That's good. So, as you can see, the router bit actually is sitting on the spring, you can see that, that working like that. All I do is I put a little bit of pressure on it, not too much, when I do the, do the, do the um, just a little bit of pressure, not much, and that's all you need to do when you're doing up the B cutters. Okay, now adjusting to height. When we're adjusting to height, now remember, this material is only 14 millimetres thick. The range of thickness for this template is 13 to 22, or about 14 to 22 for various measurements. Now, I'm only half a millimetre over that, okay? So a little bit over 14 mil. So when I adjust that, and I'll show you what happens here, we adjust this, Now I'm adjusting it so they've got a millimetre or so spare, right? Now, here's the thing. The bearing, can you come in a little closer there? The bearing needs to run on the template. And as you can see, there is not very much, I'll get something to point with, there is not very much support there for that bearing. All right, it's really difficult to see, but it's not very much there at all. It's, it's okay, it will work, but I'm not going to trust it. So I'm going to show you a technique that I use when we're right at the bottom edge. We don't want to cut into our template and we don't want to cut into um, anything where we're going to damage anything. So what I need to do is I need to raise that up a little bit. If I raise it up a little bit without putting a spacer in there, you'll find that your, the height of, your, of your, the depth of your cut here is not going to work with your um, uh, measurements and you're going to end up finding, um, you're going to end up with a, um, a, a too big a cut on here. So this is where we come with the spacer. So I have two spacers. I've got one at 3.5 and one at 5 mil. Okay. Now, with spacers, the thing about the spacers is this measurement plus the thickness of that should not exceed the 22 millimeters that on that that the that the, is the maximum of this, all right? So the idea is, I'm going to use 3.5. So 
So 3.5 and 14.5 makes 17. I better put it in the right place first. Makes 17.5 mil, which is pretty much in the middle of um, the thickness range of the of the jig. Okay, so if I pull that to there, put that to there, sit my spacer on there, and then pop that on top of the spacer, I can then clamp that in place. And before I cut, I take out the spacer. Okay? So that means that to get this to cut to the right height, I've got to raise it up a little bit, okay? I've got to raise it up at least 3.5 millimeters. So with that said, this is how we go about that. I hope you're getting this. So we put the spacer on our height adjuster. We sit our piece of timber on there. This way and I'll just set that to the right height just there okay so now I have lots more support on my template okay now I'll just show you how that works so we'll get into that right now the thing about the spacer is you've got to be on the ball with it all the time so piece of chalk what do i want to, to look at this is going to be the bottom because i've got a little borer hole there which will get covered over and this is going to be the top so if that's the front because it's got the color on it this will be the back and the back on the outside. So my spacer there, this will be the bottom back on the outside. You can see I've got my face side mark on there now. And my, my two sides, do I want to see color on the inside of the box or do I want to see it on the outside? That's my decision. So I think I'll see it on the outside. So this will be the outside and that will be the front. So face side mark there. This is going to be the outside of that one. So face side mark there. So now my face side marks are giving me three different things. This is the top of the box, or it's going to be where the door is. It's going to be the front of the box. This is the bottom of the box or the back of the box where we're going to fit the uh, fit the panel on. And this is the outside of the box. So those three things are the most important things to remember when you've got your face side marks on there. So setting up now with the, with the system. I've already set the height of the route a bit, so we're all good with that. So now it's just to set up with this. So when I set this up, you can see that fitted in there perfectly. My three millimeter spacer goes underneath like so. Actually it's a 3.5. Now remember 3.5 plus 14, 17.5 mil. Like I said, it's the middle in between, in the range, middle of the, of the, 13 to 22 millimeter range. If I clamp that there. And very important that you put two clamps on this. I'm over 100 millimeters. Press it down a little. And that's going to slide out nicely. So there, and you can see, I'll just turn this on. You can see I have a little space underneath. Okay, 
So that's, that's okay. That's going to work quite nicely. Just make sure your clamps are done up tight and then we can cut our dovetails like so. All right, so let's get to it and we'll cut some dovetails. Grab a pair of earmuffs. So, ears on everybody. I'll just shift this stuff out of the way. Better turn the power on, I suppose. Oh, it's on. Okay, so we're ready to go. Make sure that you go all the way through. You can see, I'll just hold this up so that you can see it. You can see I've cut all the way into the bottom of the thing. I've cut all the way to the back, all the way to the back. Um, I'm having people ring me about um, joints not fitting correctly because they don't go all the way to the back. You've got to go right through. Go in the right hand side of the, of the space come out the left hand side and if you do it a couple of times you can clear out any excess that might be in there. So when we swap over this is where you need to be switched on you need to remember what you've done the first time. When we rotate we rotate like so. Put it in and now a little spacer goes in like so. Lock that up, lock this one up. Take the spacer out, remember to do that. Like I said, be switched on with it. And then we cut our second ones. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Hiya Skip, noticed you're on deck again. And John Carroll too. Both Carroll and John Carroll. Who? John Carroll. John, how are you going? I, I didn't see it was John. Oh, there you are. How you going, mate? Hope it's nice over there for you at the moment. What am I doing now? God, gee, I've distracted myself. Remember, face side mark out and the first cut. Pointing to my red stop. Here we go. Again. Stay in the moment. You can see, you can see I've now got two dovetails on each end. And that's really all I need for that, for this, for this particular type of box. I could make it in um, a thinner material and I could use my A10 and get a whole lot more dovetails um, but I think it gets a little bit busy when you start sort of building things like that and you get you get all that um, all those joints sitting up okay ears on everybody <laughs> Last one.
And so there we have all our dovetails cut. So that didn't take very long at all. Once you got it all set up and we've got some really nice dovetails. Okay. Now, as I said to you before, this is a 3.5 millimeter spacer. Okay, so I'll just make them up as I go along. And the five millimeter spacer, even if I add the five millimeters and the 14.5, which is what that is, it gives me 19.5. I'm still within the range of um, the cutting sizes for the, for the jig. So I could have gone a little higher if I wanted to. It still would have given me my 14 millimeters here. Okay, or 14.5 mil here. So that's uh, up to you as to whether you want a, a lot more, a lot more support or a little less, or a little bit less. So you can figure that one out. Now we turn it around, and our pins, face side mark out, and the bottom of the box pointing at the red stop. Okay, so that's my habit. Again, stay switched on. I nearly forgot then. Lock it in. Take that out. Now we have to change our route a bit. For those of you who've just popped in, I'm just going to show you this once more. And a straight bit. Don't forget to give it a clean. And just come in there again. A piece of this, a piece of that. And my adjusting height adjuster. Now, when you do this up, remember. Just a little bit of pressure. You don't need a lot, just a little bit of pressure. Give it up. Okay, so it's quite nice. The spacer goes on there. Now this is the opposing piece of material that I'm using. millimeter you can measure it if you like but I generally guess it because I've been doing it for a while Leave that close don't need that anymore so now what we have is we have a bigger space between each of the pins okay so if you look at that very carefully you'll see um, you'll see that, that quite a wide space between the pins. So what we need to do is we need to cut across the face of it first from right to left and, um, and then we'll clear out the material from behind. And as you can see, I'm going to take a, a few cuts to get it to, to work, but it will work beautifully anyway. Okay, so let's just go out of the way. Use on. And our first cut. As you can see, I've cut all the way in, a little bit extra there, I've cut all the way into the backing board as well. Okay, so make sure that that happens. You must cut into the backing board. The backing board supports the route a bit so that 
you get a nice clean cut on the inside of the joint okay so now that I have my first set of joints I think I might do a little test bottom okay so that's going to go there look at that just lovely perfect fit okay so now let's pull it apart Now remember, this is where we started from. We rotate like so with our face side mark out. It doesn't matter, we don't need to have our face side mark pointing at the red stop anymore. The first cut is where it's important. That way it's all lined up nicely. Make sure that spacer goes in the right place. bit loose that one so I'm just going to tighten that still a little bit loose the clamp was pulling it up it's got it just got to be careful of that Okay, so we're ready to go. So ears on. Brian Laird it is good to be back so now we have both sets finished quite nicely okay again sit it in give it a nice spacer I think that's all we're going to get done today is just to get this framework done put together another couple of minutes check that yep, good Just before I start this one, you'll notice where I have my hands when I'm using the jig. For those of you who are new to it, I've got my hands resting on the bench. Now, the idea is to make sure that you've got plenty of support for the jig. It's, it's going to slide nicely because you've got a flat surface to work on, but it, it should slide quite easily and you're not moving very far. So therefore, you don't. if you have your hands up here, you've got very little control of what's happening down... Uh, there your fingers are well out of the way of the, the, the router bit so you're not going to hurt yourself anyway and and your hands are actually stabilizing the whole of the jig while you're working with it so it's always a good idea to have your hands resting on the bench and I've only just got a couple of fingers actually pushing the jig back and forth okay so I've got my thumb at the back of it if you can see here you can see where my thumb is all the way at the back of it so it's um it's it, quite important that you, you, you give it some stability, but then again, um, you want control as well, okay? 
So we cut it again, so ears on. Okay, now you may find, just want to show you this, you may find at the right hand side of your cut, you may find you end up with a little chip out like this. All right? You can see a little, little chip out like that. Now, the reason that this happened with this timber is because it's very, very flimsy along that edge. All right? So it might mean that I have to do a little bit of repair. Okay, so it, it's not a, not a big drama. It's on the back of the box. And there's my piece of timber that's come off there. So I'm just going to glue that back in place and you won't even know that it's, that it's, um, that it's been missing. Okay, so you just need to be a little bit aware of that. Particularly with some timbers, you'll find, and camphor being very light timber, you'll find that, um, You'll find that occasionally you will get a little chip out. Um, Silky Oak does it occasionally, not very often, but it will do it. Cedar does it occasionally because, again, another light timber with very fine fibres. So you'll get a couple of those little problems depending on how wide your piece of timber is. Now, if, if the timber was a little bit narrower, it probably wouldn't have happened. But it was right at the last little bit edge, little edge of the, of the cut that it actually happened. So... I've got another one on that end, but that doesn't matter. I can fix those. To, they'll just keep that piece. And this is how our frame is going to go together. So let me get that out of the way. <coughs> Don't need these anymore. Now the next task um, is to cut a trench across the two side bits so I can put the... the um, the panel on the inside but I don't have enough time to do that today so just remove all of this and here is the frame for our box well the cabinet I suppose So that's the outside, so that's an inside. Okay, so look how nice that is when it fits. Okay. 
this goes up here. So, we now have this cupboard frame all ready to go. So all I need to do is just fix up a little tear out there, little tear out there, and, um, and then we start the rest of the process. Now, what I want to do is I want to put a panel across here. What I have to do is work out how deep I want my drawer. You'll notice that on that cupboard that we have on the wall there, the drawer is quite deep, which takes away a bit of the space in here. Now, if we're putting adjusting shelves in here, we need to drill the holes now before we actually assemble the jig, assemble the, 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 the box, because you're not going to get the holes for adjustable shelving pins um, straight away. So the idea is to make sure that a lot of that stuff is done pretty much <coughs> straight away. So. I've got a croaky voice. It's my first day back, so there we go. Okay, so what I'd like to do is have a look at the questions, see if there's any questions we need to answer at this stage. So... Oh, he wants to know, can you put a, a sacrificial piece of timber on the right side to stop the die out? You could, you could do that, um, Ozzy, but uh, it... it it means that you have to fiddle around with your adjustment. The only thing that you can really do is put a piece, sometimes I've, um, I, when I know I've got a piece that doesn't work very well, I'll, I'll, I'll run some super glue on it just so that it hardens and toughens up and joins the, the fibres together and I'll cut it then. That will re reduce a bit of it. But if you put a sacrificial piece on, it means your adjustment of your stop is going to be out, particularly when you flip it over. So it's, um, it's something that you could sort of play with a little bit, have a think about. The other, the other way around is make your piece of timber a little bit thinner and come in from the side a bit more. So there's that, um, that technique. But we wanted a, a cupboard that's quite narrow that we can sit on the wall and it's only got chisels in it or it's only got screwdrivers in it. You could use these in your house. If you want to build these and make them into a little flower boxes or a little um, knick-knack um, boxes on the wall, they look really nice because they've got these lovely dovetails in them. If you have a look at the dovetails there, you can see that, that shows up on the job. And when you put another piece of timber over the top of it, it looks like a blind dovetail. Everybody goes, oh, gee, you're clever cut blind top tiles in your cabinet it's always a feature so anyway that that sort of thing can happen so what was going to happen is this is going to we're well, going to make another piece in there here and uh, oh, turn it around so you can see um, so I'm going to have another piece that sits in here um, it won't be this thick I'm going to, to dress it down so it's quite thin so I have to um, fiddle around doing it from there so that's where we're going to end it today and what I will do next week, we will start with, um, I'll have the, the bits and pieces ready for um, cutting the trench and um, we'll take it from there. So I hope you've enjoyed today. It's the, the start, it's, I, I know it's only a simple project, but it's the start and um, we'll at least it'll get you guys back into it and, um, and me as well. So it's uh, yeah, just one of those things. So have a good one, folks. Don't forget, uh, Dave's doing his shadow box um, frames today, so that could be interesting. Um, Pammy's been asking me to do some frames for some pictures, so I'm going to be watching to see what he's up to, and uh, maybe I'll get some ideas from, from what he's doing. So flick over to Dave and um, see how you go. Um, he'll be uh, just about ready to get started, I think, so... Have a good weekend, everybody, and I will see you next week.
David Owens has dumped 